here's what my pipeline looks like if I take the previous code which defined each of the steps in the pipeline and transform it into a pipe. So I first read in the data as a CSV. This pipe operator here is a little hard to see because it's over on the right side, but I pipe it directly into the mutate function that fixes the test scores. Then that output gets piped into the step that changes the pass-fail values into numbers that gets piped into the transmute function that creates the new minimal table that gets transformed into the uh, filter that removes the NA values. And then finally, it gets piped into the function that arranges them in descending order. I'm going to go ahead and clear the global environment here so that we can see what happens. That means I need to re load these libraries. So let's go ahead and do that. If I run this, you will notice that I have produced the same values as I had before down here in the console. However, if we look at the global environment, it's empty. All of those intermediate data objects that I created when I used the first approach here don't exist because you'll notice I never assigned any of the outputs of any of the fun functions to any variables. They just simply flowed in straight from the CSV on the internet and flowed out in the end to the console. No storage locations were ever used in the whole process. So this eliminating the need of all these named intermediate objects means the code is going to be a lot cleaner and a lot easier to understand when you look at it. You also don't create clutter up your environment with all of these intermediate data objects that don't actually ever get used for anything. The other thing is that this is considered to be a single command the uh, piping uh, operator allows me to put subsequent piping operations on new lines, but you'll notice that each of the new lines is indented here. Um, that means that this is really just a continuation of the first line. So it'd be a bit difficult to do, but I could take all of the parts of the pipe and put them on a single line. That's why when I run the pipe, I don't have to click run several times. I just only click run once because it's really only executing a single command. If I just want to see the answer, that's fine. But if I want to save the answer to do something with it in the future, I can take the output of the pipe and use the assignment operator to assign it to a new data structure. So if I run this modification of the code, you'll see that the output no longer shows up in the console, but rather it gets assigned to a tibble, which uh, I can look at in this summary of the data frame. Or I can have it be displayed in the console. Another alternative is to add an additional step at the end which is to take the output tibble and pipe it into the write CSV function. We haven't talked a lot about that function, but I uh, can use this syntax here to send it to a file called grades underscore output dot CSV. I haven't specified any path telling me where that file is. So one of the things that would be useful to know before I run this pipeline is what, where's the file going to go? By default, it will get sent to my current working directory. I can find out where that is using the get wd command. So I can see when I run that command that it's going to go into my user folder. When I run this pipe here, once again, there is no output on the console. There's also no output in the global environment. But if I go to Finder 
and I go to my user folder, I can see that there is a file now called grades output. And if I load that file, it has the results that we have been seeing in the other examples. In the previous examples, I reloaded the tibble from the internet as the first step in the pipeline. But if you have the results of some earlier operation that were stored in a tibble or a generic data frame, you can just simply list the name of the data frame and pipe it into the first function using the pipe operator. If I want to run this last bit of code I'm, and clear out my global environment so that I can see what happens, I'm going to have to go back to the beginning here, reload the packages, and then reload the file into the grades tibble. So now that I have the data in the grades tibble, I'm in a position to run my last pipeline which starts by loading it from the grades tibble and then runs those data through the pipeline. Once again, I have sent the output directly to the console rather than putting it in a file or another data frame. So I can just see the output down here in the console part of my screen.